Again, I want to thank the Atheist Community of San Jose, Military Association of Atheists and Free Thinkers, Angela Garvey, the Humanist Association of Greater Sacramento Area, Black Humanists, Nonbelievers of Sacramento, the Reason Center in Minga, and the Compassionate Humanists. Now, we've also got a lot of volunteers here. I want to recognize Masha Riki, our volunteer coordinator. Let's give her a round of applause. Come on up. And you want to say a few words. Yes, I do. I want to say a huge, huge, huge thank you to everyone who's volunteered in prior years and this year. And I know I don't stress it enough. I appreciate it. Our whole organization appreciates it. Everything you do, whether or not it's making phone calls or helping to put up flyers around town so people know it's happening or spending all day long here with us volunteering. It's really appreciated. So I'm going to give a quick shout out to my volunteers. We have Noel <laughs> Navarro, who I always butcher his name, is a dog on shame. Noel, Nancy, Christine, Roger, and Pam. We have Ben, we have Akari, we have Ryan, Wayne, and we have Anna. Woohoo, they're still over there. Anna, <laughs> Dana, Kat, Ray, Robert, and Lynn. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yay! And I'll be calling you again next year. <laughs> yeah, and of course, anyone that wants to be a part of this great committee or our volunteer team, please do get in touch with us sooner rather than later so we don't have to scramble to find you. Um, every year we do this uh, really cool Freethinker Gallery and we bring new people to that gallery. How many of you had a chance to check out that Freethinker Gallery over there? Good, good. And I want to recognize Tom behind me. It was his idea a few years ago and we've been, well, just making it look better and better and adding more people to it every year. And so now I'm really thrilled to show you our next two inductees to our Freethinker Gallery. And if you can just hand that over to me, we got one and two. So, our first inductee is Mr. James Baldwin here. There you go, there you go. All right, James Baldwin, an essayist, writer, and activist. And so we're gonna add this, of course, next year. And so you can go over there and check out what he's done and a little couple, couple quotes from him. And, Marie Curie, the chemist, physicist, and Nobel laureate. Round of applause for our two new inductees. All right, now, we have some prizes, some door prizes. Hopefully you guys all got a chance to enter, and uh, thank you to everyone who has. So let's do one of these baskets. We got the white basket first, and I'm trying to shuffle these, but it's kind of hard. So we'll see what happens here. Again, I'm not looking. Yeah. All right. Oh, and our white basket is, you want to you bring that over here? There it is. Is that the white basket? All right. The winner of our white basket, who does not need to be present, we'll call you if, you, uh, if this is you, but if you are, come get it, Shelly Siegel. Hey, Shelly! where are you? Right over there. Congratulations on the Pastafarian basket. Ramen. All right, there's our winner. All right, what do we got next? All right, our blue basket for young scientists. We've got Legos, we've got science books, we've got a poster of Bill Nye, and all kinds of other cool stuff. There's a lot of entries in this one. All right, and our winner is Will Weyer. Will or Wire? Will? All right, cool. Congratulations, Will. <laughs> All right, and our final, our red basket for book lovers, the winner is Pat and Francie McInnes. Pat and Francie, are you here? All right, I'll be calling you shortly. Congratulations and thank you all for those of you who filled one of these out. We really appreciate that.
And as we kind of wrap up our segment up here, we want to take a little bit to recognize some people that we've lost uh, this year. And to help us do that, uh, Tom Eichelman, everyone. All right, thank you all for coming out today. Uh, we do memoriams to honor those who have come before us, and we honor many of them here at Free Thought Day with our gallery over here. All of these that we have inducted so far are national heroes. Today I'm going to do three memoriam, uh, two for national heroes and one for a local hero. The first one is for Paul Krasner. Paul Krasner was a comedian, counterculture icon, anti-religionist, and founder of The Realist, thumbed his nose at the world one last time, and went away on July 21st of this year. A key figure in the cultural re rebellion from the 50s through Vietnam, he coined the word yippie, co-founded the Youth International Party, and was one of the activists who made the 1968 Democratic National Convention a madhouse. Was anybody there? I don't know. Uh, comedian George Carlin said that Paul was funnier than Danny Kay, more powerful than Jerry Lewis, and as important as acid. In 1968, Paul offered his philosophy. If I had one thing to tell everybody, it would be, do it now, take up music, read a book, proposition a girl or a boy, but do it now. We know we are all sentenced to death. People cannot become prisoners of guilt or fears. Cling to each moment and take what enjoyment you can. Our second memoriam is to Janet Asimov. Janet Opal Jepson Asimov left us on February 25th of this year. We remember her not as the wife of Isaac Asimov, but for contributions to psychiatry, psychoanalysis, mystery literature, science fiction, and humanism. In the words of Roy Speckhart, director of the American Humanist Association, Janet was a whirlwind well into her 80s, racing from place to place, but taking time to engage in lifelong learning, to write her unique and compelling style, in her unique and compelling style, and to appreciate the arts and culture. Her direct approach, generous demeanor, and clever humor will be sorely missed. Janet published 27 works, including six novels, many with her husband. We'll miss her too. And then for our local uh, hero of free thought, um, and maybe at some point we'll induct some locals into our gallery, uh, but we had one that was very uh, active in this community uh, who went by the name of Beverly Church as a free thinker. How many of us here today remember Beverly? I see a number of hands and that's great. It's been a while. All of us here today do owe Beverly a, a special place in our hearts. She was an integral part of the Sacramento Free Thought community. She was a member of the local Unitarian Universal Society Sacramento. And uh, did I lose my Sorry. Are we on again? There we go. Uh, she was a member of the local Unitarian Universal Society Sacramento and a very active member and at one time or another was on the boards of the Atheists and Other Freethinkers, the Humanist Association of the Greater Sacramento Area, the Facts Church, and on the organizing committee for this event, uh, Free Thought Day. And she also served on the board of the National American Humanist Association for a while. She was also instrumental in helping with various legal actions defending separation of church and state as we are doing today. Bev was one of the first people who welcomed me into the Free Thought community. I went to my first Free Thought Day, I think in 2003, and Bev was on the board then. Uh, she welcomed me. I went out to dinner with everybody after we cleaned up, and I joined the committee and remember that we had many meetings for the committee uh, that she hosted at her house. She also hosted the Free Thought Day reception at her house for many years. It was a very cozy venue and made her famous artichoke dip, which Ken Nahigian continues to bring to receptions in her honor. She was president of the committee for a number of years and continued to serve in that capacity even as her health declined. 
Due to her health, she eventually had to move in with her family in 2012 back to Arkansas and to Tennessee, and she died in 2013. It's hard to believe it's been seven years since we saw her. What can we do to keep our memory of Bev alive? We can keep this event going strong and build it into even more. One of Bev's goals was to have this become a nationwide event with local events in every state. Wouldn't that be great? She had started to put together a formula for it to share with others, and maybe we can work on that in the future. If we can get enough help. At times like these, this becomes ever so more important. One of Bev's goals was also to get enough participation and funding for this local event so that we could have a fireworks display. Can you imagine being at that point? That's where we need, that's the goal we need to set. So if you'd like to show your appreciation for Bev's efforts, donate to Free Thought Day if you can, or come out and volunteer to help. We need more Bev churches, people who will stand up for freedom of conscience and separation of church and state, but we also need more help with other things. So even if you're not a, a full on Bev, full energy, come out and help us when you can. Uh, thank you all for being here and being active today. And I just want to say one more time that today could not at all be possible without the people right here behind me. Thank you guys all so much for making today successful. And now back to our MC. Quick fireworks display in her honor. Yeah.